covering the Grizzlies and the Nets is finally here. And as exciting as it is for all things going on with all the great ESPN personalities in Memphis, Michael Cole, we have some disappointing news to discuss. But, hey, it's never disappointing to get locked on Grizzlies started off here. Sean Coleman here, credential media member with the Grizzlies, along with the Michael Cole, my co-host here on the Locked on Grizzlies podcast. You can find me at Stats SAC, him at DeMichael C, the show at Locked on Grizz. We got a lot to get to, DeMichael. First off, how are you, sir? Welcome back to Memphis. Sean, I'm I'm great. You know, I was just I was just sitting in my my own bed, you know, and, and I was just thinking like, man, it, it just feels good, you know, to be back in my own bed. And you know, it was a nice long road trip. I believe it was nine days, so uh, a lot of action, you know, some 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 really good moments and some really, you know, uh, not so good moments uh, during that road trip. But uh, overall, the Grizzlies emerged from it in a in a really good place. And me personally. Uh, it's a homestand, so I get to stay in Memphis for a little while, so I say you can't beat that. Nothing can beat it, and of course, obviously, you know, something that uh, many of us have been looking forward to, the man himself, uh, to my right, left, DeMichael, uh, the man himself uh, broke the story, obviously, that ESPN Day would be coming to Memphis. It has now arrived. Several big ESPN talents will all be in Memphis for what should be a great game, but before we get to that, of course, a bit of disappointing news, obviously, came out earlier tonight. Of course, we know that John Morant uh, has missed two out of the last three games with a knee injury, what has been called knee soreness. It doesn't seem as if Taylor Jenkins has been too concerned. But, you know, DeMichael, it's been announced now that he's going to miss this game against the Nets. And, and let's be honest. This is the type of game, this is the type of opportunity that John Morant certainly enjoys. He wants to be on the center stage, especially against competition like Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. I don't have as much disappointment or as much concern about his knee soreness right now. I'm more disappointed for Jaw. He gets to miss this stage. But where are you right now on this soreness? Because this is three out of the past four games that he's been unavailable. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too much different. Well, from you on on this, Sean, uh, you know, from a, I guess the emotional perspective is what the fans are tied into right now. The with ESPN being here and it's this big day just for the Grizzlies, first time in four years that the NBA has done this for a team, and you know, the main attraction that people want to see from a national level is John Morant. So, some people, I mean, let's just be honest, some people are going to see the jaws out. And they're not going to tune in for the entire game. You know, they're probably going to check in. Oh, it's a close game in the second quarter. Let me see what's going on. Oh, it's a close game in the fourth quarter. Let me see what's going on. And that's the John Moran effect. You know, that's that's how it goes. But people still are going to watch the game. People still want to see this Grizzlies team. And it's a two-way street there, you know, because in terms of job with his soreness, I think when you take the emotion out of it, which the emotion is the fact that, he is missing this big moment for the Grizzlies, for himself, that he's really been the main, you know, ingredient that has helped the Grizzlies get this type of moment. I mean, I uh, wrote it in one of my stories yesterday that John Moran is top three in ESPN's social media engagement. You know, those other two players are we're talking LeBron James and Stephen Curry. Those are the top two. And he's in that same conversation as those guys. So that just goes to show you where he is now on a national level in terms of the engagement wise and ESPN, you know, had this whole day planned out. So, but when you take that part out of it, Sean, you take the emotions out logically, you know, it makes sense. This is a, a tough game, you know, so to speak, Kyrie Irving, you know, with the road factor and everything, but the Grizzlies have played well without John Morant for one. And even if you take the Grizzlies factor out, the Nets have been better with Kyrie and Kevin Durant, but they are very beatable. This isn't, you know, a top three team in the East by any means. And when Kevin Durant has been healthy, they have played that way. I will say that. But this is a very beatable opponent. And on top of that, John Morant will miss this game. And then you turn around, you get the Pacers next. And we just saw them. I mean, you talked about him missing three of the last four games. Of one of those games was a blowout win over the Indiana Pacers where John Morant didn't play. And you have that back to back. So now you can possibly sit him out Thursday too and gear up for either Saturday against the Bucks, or you can hold him until Monday against 
against Golden State. But I think, you know, Golden State losing to the Orlando Magic last night and extending that Western Conference lead to two games, it that really could play a part in how, you know, they go about this. So, so it's a lot of things going in the Grizzlies' uh, favor right now. And John Morant, knee soreness, you know, it isn't one, You but you have to take the emotion out. Once you take the emotion out and you realize the, the logic side of this and you say, you know what? Yeah, he's missing a big ESPN game, but it's just one game. It has little bearing on where this team wants to go and needs to go this season. And then, you know, there is a bit of concern, you know, right now, right? Because, you know, we've talked about the, you know, how injuries could impact the Western Conference. We're seeing Chris Paul out, Steph Curry out. Obviously, bigger names are out as well. Jamal Murray, Jermichael Porter Jr., so on and so forth. But, you know, again, I, I go back to the fact that, again, I, I'm more disappointed for Jaw and, and missing out on the ability to be able to play in this type of game. But you also kind of have to look at it from the Grizzlies' perspective to where I do think that they're kind of making the right decision here because if you look at the grand scheme of things over this 11 game stretch going back to the game last week against the Pacers that they're now going to be put through this game on Saturday with the Bucks. that's five out of six games against the Eastern Conference opponents if the Grizzlies lose one or two of those games it doesn't have as much bearing as them losing to a Western Conference opponent but after that game against the Bucks. Four of your next five games are against Phoenix, Golden State, Denver, and Utah. Where would you rather have a healthy job? Through that stretch or this current stretch of five of six games versus the Eastern Conference? I think that has to be remembered and that the Grizzlies are just doing right by themselves and jaw with the bigger picture in mind of a, of a playoff run. That's the main reason why it's fueling their ability to give him the rest they can now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Sean. And and, and you talk about that that last stretch. It's it's brutal, and we're we're hearing news now. You know that Chris Paul is is on his way back, possibly in the next week. So now you know what that means. Chris Paul is probably going to be playing, you know, in that game. And you can look at it two ways. Say, oh, the Suns have like a nine game lead. You know, they're about to clinch. They probably would care less, you know, about playing their starters. But I'm looking at it from the spec. They're probably going to be wanting to ramp Chris Paul up at that point and probably rest the last two or three games. So you got that game. We just talked, you mentioned Denver, Utah. They're battling right now for seeding position and all those things. These games are going to be important. Whereas these games against these Eastern Conference teams, for one, they're winnable with or, or without Ja. And two, you know, like you said, when tiebreakers and those things come into play, which they probably will, and with Golden State, let's, I mean, let's say it like it is, Golden State, is is just not playing really good offensive basketball right now. And and we talked about this recently. I, I I said that I felt like defensively they'd be just as strong or even stronger, and they have been. But offensively, I mean, 16 points in the fourth quarter against the Magic just, just isn't going to do it. But when you factor all those things in, you have the ability to rest John Morant a little bit more, and you want to have him for that last stretch. You want to have him against Denver. Because Denver is going to be playing their heart out. They're 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 battling for play in position right now, and no one wants to be that seventh seed in the play in because I mean, the Clippers could get Paul George back. I mean, it's it's possible, and even if they don't get Paul George back, it's one game. It's just one game. So you lose, boom, you bounce back to eight. And I don't care how bad the Lakers have been playing. I I personally, you one game with LeBron James, I, I just wouldn't. You know, that's risky. So. A lot of things are working in the Grizzlies' favor, but you they need to set themselves up. And John Morant, you know, from an injury perspective, from a health perspective, to be as healthy as possible going into that, that final stretch. Absolutely. And if you listen to some people like Stan Van Gundy, heck, the Grizzlies should just sit here and set jaw through the first round of the playoffs because – why wouldn't you want to go with the formula that leads you to be in 14 and two so far this season? All joking aside, while John Moran unfortunately will be out, and again, you know, from me and DeMichael both, again, this concern's not necessarily necessarily there as of yet that this is something bigger than a short term ailment. One byproduct is, is that we've heard a lot of talk about the Grizzlies without John Moran. They're going to get their biggest test without the engine that makes their team run tomorrow night. 
on the biggest stage. We'll discuss that in just a moment. But before that, listen, tomorrow night's going to be a great opportunity if you're someone that enjoys daily fantasy sports. And the reason why that is is because with so many fun talents on the court, why not choose prize picks as the way to make your enjoyment even more fun? With prize picks, it's easy to use. You pick two to five players and an over-under on their projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry, and it's just you for, versus the projected numbers. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. The great thing is, is that you can choose any type of prop, whether it be points scored, rebounds, even steals. The great thing is, is that it's not just NBA. You can use it when it comes to college basketball, college football, NFL, MLB, any type of opportunity that's there, you certainly can enjoy prize picks. For a limited time, prize picks is an exclusive no-brainer of an offer for all of our users. Users get $50 for free. If a player in your first prize picks entry scores a single point, you must if, if you if a, your player scores a single point, you get $50 for free, but you, you must use the promo code locked on NBA. For locked on users, that's the promo code locked on NBA. Check out prizepicks.com today. Of course, we want to thank you for listening to the Locked On Grizzlies podcast, but there's so much going on in the world of college sports. You've still got, obviously, recruiting going on in college football, obviously the Sweet 16 in college basketball, the number one team in the country in college baseball is the University of Tennessee Volunteers. Oh, we're going to plug the volunteers like crazy. There are so many different reasons why when it comes to your favorite college team, you should check out the Locked On College podcast of your choice as your second list of the day after Locked On. So, DeMichael, let's, you know, obviously John Morant not being available for tonight's game. That puts a bit of a, of a damper on things, if you will. But there are so many reasons to be excited. And, DeMichael, I'm going to ask you this question real quickly. You've had a couple of great stories come out talking about different ESPN personalities and their opinions of the Grizzlies outside of John Morant. Stephen A. Smith, of course, and we hate to see it, hate to see it, being somber that his, that his Knicks don't have John Morant. But all joking aside, just how much fun has it been for you with the ability to talk with some of these great talents. And can you give us an idea of just how many of these great ESPN talents are going to be in town for tonight's game against the, the, uh, the net? It's, it's been special, you know, just, just talking to them and, and, and getting, you know, their ideas of, of one it's, I think it's always interesting to see or hear what people, you know, who don't watch the Grizzlies every day think, because, most of the time, you know, one, they'll be able to watch some games, but a lot of their opinions are being formed on little, you know, parts of games that they see. And sometimes that's highlights from, you know, Twitter or, or Instagram or Facebook or however they consume, you know, that media, YouTube, whatever it may be. But the thing is, I mean, the thing that I picked up on just talking to a couple of the people in general is just they're big, they're big on the Grizzlies not just John Moran. And I think, you know, we saw on Twitter, you know, everyone was making a joke, oh, ESPN's so sad right now and all that. And honestly, Sean, I, I don't think they are. Maybe that's that's my personal opinion. Just I, I, I went back and listened to, to some of the conversations that I've had, and we're not even – I'm going to get into the big faces who are going to be here. But um, one of the head of programming at ESPN, uh, David, David Roberts, you know, I went back and listened to a lot of our conversation. We talked for around 20 minutes. Not one time in that conversation did he single out John ja Morant. Every time that he mentioned the Grizzlies and their young talent, he mentioned young core. He said words like young core, uh, you know, talented group, things like that. It was never, yeah, John ja Morant and the Grizzlies, you know, like some people would think it is and things like that. I thought that was interesting. Just going back and listening to that. Uh, it's not, I mean, and of course, you know, he did mention, you know, John Morant is, is a big driving factor. Yes. But they, they view the Grizzlies as having one of the best young cores in the NBA. We're talking, you know, up there with the Boston Celtics, the Phoenix Suns and so forth. They view them having a young core that's up there that rivals, you know, the best in the NBA. And from ESPN perspective and from the words out of David Roberts mouth, they want to highlight that young core. Not highlight just John Morant. And his dunks and everything else. That's a part of it. He's the biggest part of the young court. Don't get me wrong. But they want to highlight players like Desmond Bain, who was just in the three-point shootout 
and, you know, the Rising Stars game. They want to highlight a guy like Jaron Jackson, top five pick, you know, defensive player of the year candidate who's done some great things. A guy like Brandon Clark who comes off the bench for the Grizzlies but would start for a bunch of other teams. But, yeah, getting back to your point about the people in attendance, uh, Jalen Rose, he was at practice on yesterday. Malika Andrews was there as well. I believe she's going to host the countdown show and she's going to going to be the sideline reporter at the game. Mike Breen, who, you know, who's famous for his puts it in and, and, and bang phrases. Bang. He, oh, sorry. <laughs> bang, Sean, bang. And he's going to be the man at, you know, calling the game play by play. And the commentator for the game will be Hugh. I mean, the guy who will be doing the color is Hubie Brown. Uh, a, a lot of those old time Grizzlies fans, you'll remember Hugh, Hubie Brown was the guy who led the first 50 win team in franchise history. And not only that, Sean, the Grizzlies right now have 49 wins. So I think it's kind of a cool, cool little angle. And I, I wrote about that as well, you know, on commercialappeal.com because Hubie Brown was one of the people that I got to chat with just hearing how he's seen the Grizzlies grow from that 50 win team to now how the, how the city is, you know, uh, receiving this group. And, and, and there was a lot of similarities just hearing him talk. It gave me a lot of Taylor Jenkins and, and how, you know, he talked about turning defense into offense and, and, you know, not necessarily just winning with talent, winning with, you know, aggressiveness and, and taking risk and things like that. A lot of Taylor Jenkins type things, I think he was saying, but, Overall, um, I mean, you're expecting, you know, Kendrick Perkins, big Grizz advocate on Twitter. You know, he's been one of the guys all season long. We've talked about Stephen A. Smith going to be there. We just mentioned, you know, Jalen Rose is going to be here. Adrian Wozanowski, you know, one of the, the best NBA insiders there is. He's going to be here. Uh, it's a who's who. Shanae Gumake, you know, um, she's a rising star, I would say, in sports media right now. She's going to be here. They are rolling out the red carpet with some of the biggest, you know, reporters that that NBA has. And and Michael Wilbon is here, too. You know, Michael Wilbon has been on PTI and, and, you know, all of his shows. He's here. And I mean, it's it's a busload of them. It's, It's a lot. It's a lot of the biggest names. But what this will do. Just not even for this game. When people when these people see these games, you're going to hear the Grizzlies being talked about more on PTI. You're going to hear them being talked about more on Stephen A. Smith's show, Stephen A. Smith's World, on and, and the rest of those shows as well, whether it's Jalen and Jacoby and, you know, the Get In show and 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 all of these shows that they have on ESPN, they're going to see the Grizzlies up close like they haven't. And But from what I've heard, Sean, I think everyone is really just excited to see, okay, we know John Morant. I mean, there's not too much for the national media to learn about John Morant. They want to see – We've heard about this Desmond Bain guy. We know he can shoot. What else can he do? How is he averaging, you know, 18 points a game? What else can he do besides shoot the basketball? Let's let's see what he's doing. Or Jaron Jackson. Yeah, we we know he blocks shots. We know he commits fouls. We we heard he's this, you know, this stretch big. But but what else? What else does he bring to the game? And and, and they want to see, you know, uh, Stephen Adams. You know, we we know Stephen Adams for doing the, the dirty work. How does that apply to this team? And all of that's going to be on display still without John Morant being in the game. Uh, the Grizzly style of play won't change much. And I think from the people that I've talked to, whether it was, you know, Hubie Brown, whether it was David Roberts, as I mentioned earlier, whether it was Stephen A. Smith, uh, these people want to see, they want to see what this Grizzlies team as a whole can look like. We talk about the fact that the Grizzlies without John Moran and it, it, that lineup of ESPN talents that you say are going to be here. You know, it's crazy. This, this could be the most, like, in terms of the talents that are going to be here, the highest covered or the highest level of coverage of the Grizzlies game has ever had in the regular season. But let's also not get away from the game itself. We talk about the Grizzlies being 14-2, and two, but I would make an argument, especially with the combination of Kyrie Irving as well as Kevin Durant, this likely is going to be the biggest test without John Morant the Grizzlies have faced all season long to Michael. But with that being said, it also is a good tune-up for the playoffs. You're going to be facing a combo like Kyrie and Kevin Durant that you're going to face in multiple rounds of the playoffs if you get to them if you're the Grizzlies. You've got Desmond Bain, who's five threes away from making for setting the all-time record. Each one of those five threes may come in handy tomorrow night, but it's not just that. 
a Dylan Brooks-led perimeter defense? How can he in any way, shape, or form limit the overall performance of Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant to whatever extent you can do that? Jaron Jackson Jr., I talked about on yesterday's episode, his key ability to be able to show up in the fourth and the Grizzlies' overall ability to get off to a hot start. Playing with the lead like their playing style is equipped for them to do. There are so many narratives there that this Nets team is going to provide a good test to see if the Grizzlies can do once again. And without John Morant, it's a great opportunity for the Grizzlies to once again get some consistency where they need to leading to the playoffs. Yeah, Ed, I mean, Dylan Brooks, you know, he's looking forward to this game. And and it's it's the little things that I pay attention to, you know, when you can tell what how players feel without them saying things. And, and I and I remember in the last game when the Nets played, you know, the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies won in Barkley Center, and you know the crowd was chanting MVP for John Morant. And you know, so I, I'm I'm a sneakerhead, you know, I, I pay attention to what shoes the guys wear, and wanna and you know. We know about the baseball unwritten rules, but the NBA has a few unwritten rules as well. And it's the little it's little t- ticky tack things that you have to pay attention to. Like when a player has the basketball out, you know, at the end of a play, he's not supposed to let an opposing player come take it. So you'll see opposing players come try to get the ball out of a player's hands and they'll try not to let it go and things like that. But Jaron Jackson, young guy in the NBA, he wears a lot of Kevin Durant's shoes. He wears Kevin Durant's sneakers for a lot of games. John Morant does, too. But Jaron Jackson always does. So when they played in, in, in Brooklyn, I, I wanted to see. I said, wonder what shoes he's going to wear because that's one of the unwritten rules. When you're playing against a guy, you're not supposed to wear his shoes. But we know in the past, you know, there are some Kobe Bryant stories out there where if he saw guys would wear his shoes throughout the season and they didn't wear them when he would play against them, he would take offense to it. So I wonder how Jaron Jackson would handle that situation. And he didn't. He didn't wear – Kevin Durant's shoes, had a really good game in that game. And what I got from that moment is, man, these young guys, they're not not backing down. And even with Ja, ja being out, you know, I think it's it's the same sense there. But but I'm with you, Sean. I think, you know, 14-2 and two looks good. But we've seen them beat Dallas, you no know, Luka in that stretch. We've seen them beat a very unhealthy Miami team. And that's two of the four wins over – teams over 500 of those 14 games that they've won 14 and two 10 of those wins are against teams currently sub 500 so it's it's the Grizzlies playing good basketball yes because at the end of the day I mean we know Sean you have to win the game in front of you and they're doing that you cannot take that away from them but comparing this squad to a John Morant led squad I think there's no comparison because we've seen John Morant beat Golden State We've seen him, you know, beat beat the Lakers, and when they were playing much better basketball than they are uh, at this point of the season, we've seen him, you know, go into Brooklyn and beat the Nets when they were playing really good basketball. When they had James Harden and you know Kevin Durant playing in that game, we've seen him, you know, help them beat the Phoenix Suns. We haven't seen this, you know. I mean, it's obviously been because you know who they've had to play against, but we haven't seen them beat this level of an opponent yet. So that, that was a great point that you made, Sean. And, and you know, like I said, 10 wins against sub-500 teams, taking care of business as they should do. But this is the game. This is the one where you say, okay, how good is this team really without John Morant? And this is the biggest test right here. And, of course, it, there is a reason why it's going to be a big test with Kyrie Irving as well as Kevin Durant, but there are some going to be some opportunities. But before we get to the game, I also want to get to some pregame comments by Kevin Durant when it comes to John Moran that you just do not typically see from Kevin Durant. Pretty special. We'll discuss that in just a moment. But before we do, to Michael Cole, you want to know what we're going to talk about? We're going to talk about Built Bar. Now, I don't know about you. When I have a Built Bar, I'll have it in the morning for breakfast. Are you more of a breakfast guy or a snack guy when it comes to a great tasting protein bar? That's not a candy bar, mind you, but a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a snack guy. You know, I, I need it as a side. And, and I, I like the white chocolate cookies and cream. Uh, Sean, that, that's the one that does it for me, man. <laughs> well, good Lord. Nothing starts your day off better 
than a cookies and cream from Built Bar. Now, whatever you choose for breakfast, that's fine. The whole point is, though, at some point, make Built Bar a part of your day. Over 18 different flavors to choose from. You have other things like the Built Bar Puffs. You go to Built.com, choose from over 18 different flavors. Put in the promo code LOCKED15. You'll get 15% off your next order from Built Bar. Once you make it a part of your day, it'll be there to stay. Go to Built.com, put in the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your next order from Built Bar. And if they ask why you got the cookies and cream, the Michael Cole told you so. And that's, that's right. good enough for me. The Michael Cole told you so. Listen on tomorrow's edition of the Locked On Grizzlies podcast. I had the pleasure of going deep into why the Grizzlies getting off to hot starts and Jaron Jackson Jr. being featured in the fourth really helps things out when it comes to the Grizzlies flow of the game. But on tomorrow's show, Michael Cole will be here with you talking about all things from the fallout of this big matchup between the Grizzlies and the Nets, getting you ready also for another matchup between the Grizzlies and the Pacers. That and much more on tomorrow's edition of the Locked On Grizzlies podcast with DeMichael Cole. So, DeMichael, before we get into a little bit of the breakdown of the game, you know, I'm sure that, you know, you saw Kevin Durant's comments about John Morant. And, and DeMichael, I, you know, Kevin Durant is someone who in no way, shape, or form has any issue when it comes to facing off, creating a bit, a bit of controversy, he'll take on, you know, he'll have words to say about the biggest stars in the game when it needs to be said. But he also will give words of, uh, you know, encouraging words. He will certainly give high opinions of those that he has high opinions of. But I'll tell you this, I can't remember Kevin Durant giving as high a praise to a young player at the age of John Morant is, I can't remember him giving as high praise to another player at John Morant's age like he just did. It was incredible to see the high opinion he had of Ja a few days ago leading up to this matchup. Yeah, and Ja took notice. You know, I, I saw Ja Morant, you know, make a tweet last night. And he basically was saying KD is a real one. You know, he noticed because that's – you got to look at it. With these younger players, someone John Morant's age, You, he's been watching Kevin Durant growing up. You know, he's – Kevin Kevin Durant, he's seen, I mean, everyone's seen Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was winning scorer titles at 22, 23 years of age. So even though he's still relatively young, um, you know, it, it's still, you know, he, he started off as an elite player at such an early age, kind of like John now. You're going to have 17-year-olds right now who are going to come to the league in two years, and they're going to say they idolized John Durant. It's going to blow you crazy because he's only 25, and you know, at the time, but – that's how this, you know, NBA life really goes. But, but yeah, just like you said, Kevin Durant doesn't do that for a lot. He's an honest guy. Kevin Durant, just hearing him talk, you know, he gets fined a lot because he he says how he feels and he will tweet how he feels and whether you know what whatever people think about that and he'll say it, you know, to reporters as well. And we've seen him, you know, you mentioned, you know, he's complimenting. I've heard him compliment guys like Jason Tatum before, uh, uh, Devin Booker before, and. But it's not a lot. When he, me personally, as a fan and as a journalist, when I hear Kevin Durant compliment a player this young in their career, that's one of the guys where I, I really tune in to listen. Kevin Durant thinks he's going to be that, that. That's who I'm listening to because he he's not just heaving out praise to young guys who are working hard, Sean. Absolutely. And so that's why you stop, you pause, and you listen, and you admire, and you're like, okay, this guy is saying it about the face of my franchise who's 22 years old. But let's also not forget the other player that is going to be on the court for the for the um, Brooklyn Nets, and that certainly is Kyrie Irving. And, and believe it or not, DeMichael Cole, when it comes to John ja Morant, the first signature moment of his career came against this guy. He came against Kyrie Irving in Kyrie Irving's third ever game as a Brooklyn Net. But believe it or not, that was two and a half years ago. The last time that Kyrie Irving faced the Grizzlies was two and a half years ago in Memphis, which was John Morant's third career game. That's the last time that Kyrie Irving faced the Grizzlies. So you better bet that he's going to have a little bit of motivation. But DeMichael, obviously, we know the whole story about, you know, Kyrie Irving's availability only on the road, things like that. Not going to get into all that. But just when you see this combination of Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant, you've got two of the best shot creators in the NBA working off each other. 
What do you feel makes it so tough to try to defend them? This isn't a situation where you're going to be able to stop one of them. You just have to hope to contain them as a duo. But just what makes them so dangerous? One of the one of the uh, most dangerous one-two combinations in the league. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's just. I mean, you hit on it. There's no defense for it. It's. It's you know you can. As good as Golden State is, you know, with, with their with their ball movement, you can kind of take them out of their offense and stall them out a little bit. And their defense is still really good, so you're not going to, you know, blow them out a lot of times. But you can make it a close game by doing things like that. You take Brooklyn out of its offense, and they're just going to say, all right, fine, Katie here. Or, you know, you take them out of their offense, they're going to just say, here, Kyrie, take the ball, do what you want to do with it. And everyone else just can't do that. Not two guys, you know, a lot of teams have one guy and a lot of teams have two guys who can. This is another important point. A lot of guys can score off pick and roll. You know, I think Desmond Bain, for example, he can you set him a screen. He's going to make a great play off of a pick and roll. But Jaws, the one guy who you want on an isolation and you say everybody move out of the way. This team has two guys. Well, they'll just say move. Go, go stand in the corner to the left. You go stand in the corner to the right. You go stand on the right wing. You go stand on the left wing. Get out of my way. Give me the whole paint. And they can score whenever they want to. And that's really going to, you know, it's going to challenge the individual defense for the Grizzlies. And I'm excited to see it, Sean, because the Grizzlies have some really good individual defenders. I, I love watching Anthony, I mean, DeAnthony Melton, you know, defend. Uh, Dylan Brooks, you know, his feistiness, his toughness as well. But probably my favorite defender personally to watch on the Grizzlies is Kyle Anderson. And I don't I don't know if he gets a lot of love for, for you know, his ability for the deflections, for the steals, for the blocks. I just like how he does it, Sean. And he's not the biggest athlete. You know, we we – talk about the Anthony Melton and his long arms all the time. And we talk about Dylan Brooks and his feet and his toughness and things like that. What is there to talk about with Kyle Anderson? Well, I, I don't know. We talk about how we talk about him being so slow a lot and, and slow-mo and him, you know, not having the biggest vertical, but still him not having the biggest vertical. We just saw him uh, have a big time rejection against Jalen Green, where it looked like the Rook was about to, you know, throw it down on him and, and he sent it easily. So, those three defenders are, are ones who come to mind for me, but just watching how when they're faced on the island, who takes those matchups? Because you talk about Kyrie. It's what we're seeing him do, you know, this season on the basketball court because, you know, there's the whole off the court stuff. But on the basketball court, if you just look at it from the perspective of he uh, sit out three, four days, sometimes sit out a week, and then he's casually just coming back and he scores 50 points multiple times this month. Um, Sean, that's that's insane. The Grizzlies are going to have their hands full with him, and I just want to I want to see who gets what assignment, you know, to start the game. And I say that because I've talked to you know Taylor Jenkins about that. It's his rotations. We've seen games he comes out. Dylan Brooks will start off on an easier matchup and then move to the tougher matchup in the second half as part of his ramp-up process. In the last game, they moved him up to 28 minutes, even though he didn't end up playing 28 minutes. His limits was 28 minutes. Where is he going to be for this game? You, you had two days off, so does he get bumped up to 30 minutes or so? And I think when they get him to that 30-minute stretch, now you're saying, okay, Dylan, you can guard Kevin Durant for 35, 30 minutes, however long you're in the game. Are, are the Grizzlies at that point yet? Do they start Desmond Bain out on him? And or do you, you know, how 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 they handle this? Because you have Kyrie Irving too, and you have Kevin Durant. Dylan has to get one of those guys. How does that affect his minute situation? And overall, who gets the other matchup and how do they fare? It's a lot to factor into this, but it's it's exciting stuff, Sean. I think you know, those bench guys, as good as they are defensively, uh DeAnthony Melton, Kyle Anderson, we're really gonna need to see them uh have some type of impact. And you hit the nail on the head several different ways in which the Grizzlies can do it. Listen, the one thing to Michael that the Grizzlies cannot afford to do is they cannot afford without John Morant to feel as if, if you know, if Kevin Durant, if Kyrie Irving get on these spurts where they're just taking over the game, the Grizzlies cannot force themselves to then play a style of game that's not them. Taking yep. quick shots, trying to create their own yep. shots. 
the big thing the Grizzlies have to do is they have to stay within what they do well because there are going to be opportunities where the Grizzlies can flash their strengths. Once again, there is the ability to get offensive rebounds against the Nets. You do have the ability to be able to shoot the three against the Nets. Winning the non-starter minutes against the Nets, the Grizzlies should have the advantage there. But the big thing for me is this. It's just playing efficient, effective basketball, especially, again, getting off to a hot start, and especially, especially, especially – especially times infinity, DeMichael, the big thing for me is can the Grizzlies get off to that hot shooting start where the starters make a couple of threes plus the bench then comes in and you get a shooting surge from a Tyus or De'Anthony Melton yeah. or a, um, a Zaire Williams. The Grizzlies have plenty of ability to find success playing their game. They're just not going to have to let the success of the Nets take them away from their game. The Grizzlies simply play their game. That gives them the best chance to win even without Jaw. Yeah, it here's a sneaky one for you too, Sean. This this one isn't you know going to get all the pretty attention and the and the sexy press and all of that. Andre Drummond versus Stephen Adams is going to be a all out war. I mean, you 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 know we've seen Stephen Adams completely control some rebounding matchups. Andre Drummond, Andre Drummond isn't that guy. That's going to be one where Stephen Adams is going to have to really work. Andre Drummond's going to have to really work. And each offensive board that those two guys end up, because let's be fair, they're both, they're probably the best two at it uh, right now. Andre Drummond has been, you know, elite at it for, for five, six, seven years. And so is Steven Adams. They've been the most consistent guys at just dominating offensive boards for a long period of time. So it's like Andre Drummond's going to get his, and that's probably going to result in some kickouts for Kevin Durant. And we've seen Steven Adams, you know, do that. And it really, you know, the Grizzlies, uh, second chance points and things like that. They're really good at it. So that matchup, you know, it's 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 not the prettiest. It's not going to be the closing lineup. We'll probably see Brandon Clark at the end of the game and, and all of that like normal. But I'm telling you, Sean, uh, I feel like the winner of that rebound matchup will probably have a big determining factor in who wins that game. And you hit the nail on the head. At the end of the day, listen, you're probably not going to win that one-on-one overall productivity-wise. You're probably not going to win the one-on-one with Kevin Durant. You're probably not going to win the one-on-one with Kyrie. But can the Grizzlies win as many of the other matchups that you see out there? And, Michael, you bring up a great point. Listen, we're not just talking about Drummond and Steven Adams being two of the best offensive rebounders in the game right now. The only two players, the only two players since 2000 – with a season of 300-plus offensive rebounds and 200-plus assists since the year 2000. That's the unique combination that you get with Drummond and Steven Adams. But the bigger thing also is, is that, again, it's the Grizzlies simply doing what they do best. You know Kyrie and Kevin Durant are elite, but can the Grizzlies be more elite at different things than the Nets? That's what's going to stand out in this game. DeMichael, it's going to be an exciting time. Just how excited are you? Let's take a step back. I know you're you're an awesome beat writer, obviously. Awesome podcast host who gives great perspective on the Grizzlies. But as a fan of basketball in general, DeMichael, just how excited are you for later tonight? I, I love matchups. You know, so I, the way I watch the game as a fan, you know, I'm looking for individual matchups. You know, I just think about when we talked to Dylan Brooks uh, the other day and he's saying, I'm not 100% yet. You know, I'm paraphrasing here. He's just basically saying, I'm not 100% yet. But, you know, I look forward to these type matchups. He knows he's going to have to guard Kyrie Irving. He knows he's going to have to guard, you know, Kevin Durant some. So I'm looking forward to see how he guards him. You know, is he picking up Kyrie Irving, you know, uh, three-quarters court, half court? Is he, you know, how physical is he with KD? Is he pushing him all the way up to the three-point line? Is he pushing him past the three-point line? Or is he letting KD get to his spot without much resistance? You know, I just want to see those little things, the game inside of the game, and I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be fun because the Grizzlies are going to compete. Uh, the Nets are going to compete. And it's at the end of the day, it's two really good teams, two completely different styles of basketball. We know the Nets, they just like to score. Uh, the Grizzlies love to score too, but they score in different ways. You're talking about a team that's going to break you down in the half court with just these cerebral assassins. And you're talking about a team that as soon as the ball's out of the net, uh, they're getting up the court in 10 seconds. And, you know, you're either you're either ready or you're not. And that's the Grizzlies. So it's going to be fun, Sean. But, I, I, I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying, you know, just watching, you know, just this Grizzlies team transform throughout the course of this season. Uh, and, you know, Taylor Jenkins likes to talk about, you know, uh, cycles and things like that. And 
they've had a few, you know, different ones over this last, you know, few stretches now. I mean, this game, you're going to get Tyus Jones, you know, back in the starting lineup, but you're playing against, you know, a different type of opponent now, whereas in, in past games when I, I've watched Tyus Jones, he doesn't, you know, he's a, he's a good defender, but he doesn't have, you know, to guard uh, the super aggressive offensive scores a lot of times. He's probably going to start out on on Kyrie at some point. How does that affect his offense? You know, those two things play off of each other. It's a lot. That's why we see Steph Curry, you know, got guards, spot up shooters a lot of times. And same thing with Chris Paul and all these ball dominant guards. So it's those game inside the game things, Sean, that I just can't wait to see. So I heard you use the expression cerebral assassin. And of course, the, the thing that that brings to mind is, you know, the phrase that it, it, it's time to play the game. And so to Michael Paul, I'll ask you, are you ready? <laughs> Sean, uh, it's, it's someone, someone's about to get a, a, a sweet chin music butt whooping in this one. That's I, I, I'm ready. Um, and you know, the next gen Grizz, we're gonna see uh, if they're ready too. Are you ready? And despite <laughs> the pedigree of Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, listen, we'll stop with the wrestling anecdotes here. But here's the big takeaway from me: is that DeMichael is an excellent beat writer, excellent writer. You know, we both enjoyed you know covering the team, you know, being podcast hosts and things like that. But here's the thing to remember: and you know, it, it, while it is you know again a bit of a damper that John Morant is not going to play in the game tomorrow night. While John Moran is the main part of the equation, there are so many different factors when it comes to this Grizzlies team having this opportunity, having so many names that many of us across the basketball world here in Memphis, across the nation, so many of these names from ESPN being here to be able to enjoy this game. The big matchup that we're seeing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving come to town and it'd be considered a marquee matchup, but that that duo is looking forward to taking on because of the caliber of team that the Memphis Grizzlies are. But here's the biggest factor of all, two biggest factors. Number one, all of that, it takes away all the titles that we may have covering the Grizzlies, covering basketball, things like that. It allows for us to be the best thing of all, a fan, and to enjoy these type of games that allow for us to be able to enjoy the sport that we all love. But the biggest thing of all to me is this, the Grizzlies are doing this and they're doing this in a year where they potentially have a decade more of this coming. This is just the beginning of these big talents coming to Memphis and us seeing these marquee matchups. And I am so much in looking forward to games like tonight, but what it can look forward to moving forward. Would you agree to Michael? Oh yeah. 100%. It's, it's exciting time. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, we call it, you know, the, the stretch run, the chase and, and things like that in other sports, but this is this is the time where you tie your shoestrings a little tighter, and and, and and you know you're you're diving a little extra farther for that loose ball. You get a couple, you know, you get a couple uh, more floor burns and, and and things like that. It's it's put up or shut up time, and everyone's trying to play their best basketball right now. That's my favorite part. You find some of those veteran teams in the middle of the season; they're used to this. They they coast their way through the middle of the season. There's no coasting right now. Everyone's after a game, you know, the Grizzlies, I mean, they have it in their practice gym. The standings are right there on the wall. They cannot avoid seeing the standings. They know what the standings look like. These other teams know what the standings look like. Anyone who tells you they're not looking at the standings in the NBA, they're not telling you the truth. (laughs) This is the best part of the season. Everyone's locked in, Sean, and we're locked on right here. Exactly. We're locked on every single day, and there was no better way for DeMichael Cole to plan that segue. This is why I enjoy hosting the podcast with him. The man knows his segues. But all joking aside, it's going to be an absolutely special day. Make sure you check out the great coverage from DeMichael, obviously leading up to the game. He'll be back with you tomorrow to host Locked on Grizzlies. I'll be back with DeMichael on Friday, obviously recapping the game against the Nets, recapping the game against the Pacers. But until then, enjoy tonight, Grizz Nation. So much to enjoy, so much special times to really look forward to when it comes to a game like this. We'll have all the coverage for you on the post-game edition tomorrow, and then obviously on Friday, wrapping up the week. For DeMichael Cole, my name's Sean Coleman. Check us out on Locked on Grizz White here on YouTube as well. Hit that subscribe button below. Have a great night. Go Grizz. We'll talk to you again soon here on the Locked on Grizzlies podcast.